It was through the democratic process he was elected as a president in 2018. Since then, His Excellency has worked tirelessly to strengthen democratic institutions and uphold the rule of law in Sierra Leone. President Yu's administration has championed numerous reforms aimed at fostering a more inclusive and just society, ensuring that the voice of the people are heard and respected. Most of all, President Yu believed in human capital development, recognizing the future of the Sierra Leone West in the hands of his youth. President Biu launched the Free Quality School Education Initiative, which aims to provide accessible and high quality education to all children. This bold and ambitious program underscores his belief that education is the bedrock of the thriving democracy and the prosperous nation. Through this initiative, millions of children have gained the opportunity to pursue their dreams and contribute meaningfully to their society. His Excellency's commitment to education, health care, and economic development reflects his belief that a strong democracy is built, built on the foundation of his well-educated, healthy, prosperous citizenry. <coughs> President Bio's influence extends beyond his national border as he continues to advocate for peace and security and sustainable development on the international stage. His dedication to this cause has earned him respect and admiration worldwide, making him a true ambassador of Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone's value and aspiration. Today we are eager to today we are gathered for this personal lecture here at Yonsei University. We have the unique opportunity to hear from a leader whose experience and insights have shaped the trajectory of his nation's democracy. President Bio served as a as an inspiration to us all, reminding us that democracy is not merely a system of government, is a great leader. Champions, championing justice, equality, and the greater good for all can ensure it take root and grow and flourish. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct honor and privilege to present to you our leader, the Professor Dong Seo Yun, the President of Yonsei University, to welcome His Excellency, the President Julius Nadaviu. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Um, I am honored to have with us His Honorable Excellency uh, Julius Mada Pio and, uh, and the President of Sierra Leone. In his lifetime, President Bio has shown extraordinary leadership. He was only 31 years old when he first gained power through a brotherly court. Instead of enjoying this power, he organized multi-party democratic elections and handed over the position to the newly elected president. Uh, he left for the United States to study from the beginning, his vision of a secure, just, and prosperous Sierra Leone drove his decisions. And, and that's why, 20 years later, uh, he was uh, democratically elected as president. He is continuing his big vision for Sierra Leone to create possibilities that everyone can believe in, especially through education. We share the fundamental belief in human capital development as key to a brighter future for everyone. I have learned a wonderful way to respond to young people's dreams from present year. And why not? Yonsei University envisions continued cooperation, collaboration with the young people of Sierra Leone. 
or why not? And in this way, uh, through higher education, we can work together to future humanity. Thank you very much. Thank you, Craig and Yoon, for your impressive welcoming address. Now, this is time to invite the, His Excellency Dr. Julius Madabia, the President of Sierra Leone, to the podium to deliver the lecture. Human Capital Investment, Foundational Learning, Gender Equality, and Food Security. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, President Do Suk Yun, distinguished faculty members present here today, students of this great university, Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> and it's an honor to stand on this sacred ground, which has been the breeding ground for hundreds of thousands of students who are contributing to the world's socioeconomic growth and development. For me, that is why I said I'm excited to be here. For well over a hundred and forty-nine years, Jonsei University has been the beacon of academic excellence, a symbol of South Korea's remarkable transformation through education and human capital development. It therefore gives me great pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, to be here today as I reminisce on the essence, the reason why I myself entered politics, which was a desire to liberate our people from the shackles of illiteracy induced indigence. In this lecture today, I will highlight some of the government's strategic efforts in enhancing the educational system in Sierra Leone and reconstructing governance since taking over in 2018. Let me start with the enhancement of educational system in Sierra Leone. My deep commitment to providing equal access to quality education for all our people finds congruence with the aspiration of the visionaries who founded this great university, Johnson University, who recognized the value of education that transcends racial and national boundaries. Quality education and human capital development lie at the heart of Sweden's national development aspirations, and indeed at the core of global sustainable development. As Nelson Mandela asserted, education is the most powerful weapon we can use to change the world. It is the catalyst for economic growth, social progress, and political stability. An educated population is the country's most Yo, oh, oh, oh. For countries like Syria, which are emerging from the shadows of conflict and yet grappling with challenges of poverty and underdevelopment, education provides a pathway to sustainable development and a brighter future. And this is why we are eager to learn from South Korea. From colonialism 
went through the war and now this is where you are. We have been through colonialism, we have been through wars, and now we have identified the lessons from South Korea and we want to learn from those lessons. And that is why we are here. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, despite our abundant natural resources, my administration has acknowledged that its most valuable asset is its human resources, which is comprised mainly of young and dynamic population. Therefore, our people, especially the youth, are at the heart of the human capital agenda which you have developed for Sierra Leone. Our landmark free quality education program focuses entirely on nurturing our children's potential to become productive citizens. In the past six years alone, our education sector has received the largest share of our national budget, annual budget which is 22% of the national budget. We are investing significantly in the education sector. And this is in order to empower our citizens with the knowledge and skills needed to thrive in an increasingly competitive, complex, and interconnected world. Prioritizing education in Sierra Leone means breaking the shackles of poverty, reducing inequality, and fostering a society where everyone has the potential to succeed. As we can all see today in South Korea, South Korea's remarkable rise from war-torn nation to a global economic powerhouse serves as a testament to the transformative power of education and human capital development. By prioritizing education, fostering innovation, and investing in people, South Korea has achieved extraordinary economic progress and improved the quality of life of its citizens. Sierra Leone has drawn lessons from South Korea's experience and we, we, we want to learn more. My government is building a robust education system that is accessible, equitable and of high quality. We have increased investment in education, hard and soft infrastructure, trained and retained qualified teachers and ensure that our curriculum is relevant to the needs of the 21st century. Our pioneering approach to radical inclusion in education, that is leaving no one behind, be it pregnant guys, adult learners, children from the most vulnerable communities, and those with disabilities has garnered commendations from around the world. Moreover, we recognize that foundational money is the bedrock of sustainable education. My government has therefore set out to reform foundational money for all as articulated in the 2022-2026 Education Sector Plan. Our goal is to build on and intensify the ongoing work in support of foundational learning to ensure that all students in Sierra Leone learn to read fluently with comprehension, acquire mathematical competencies, and develop resilient socio-emotional skills by primary four in order to reap the benefit of subsequent education, whether technical, vocational, or higher. 
and to achieve professional and personal success in life. The key pillars of the reform we focus on expanding access to free primary education and aligning the education system and teacher support to deliver improved learning outcomes through the first four years of school. The foundational learning reform also pays attention to the inequalities that continue to affect children's success to school, access to school rather, and their ability to learn, including the global impact of rising cost of living, hunger, and malnutrition. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, in Suradium, we take the education of God very seriously. In the past six years alone, our enabling policies have permitted us to achieve gender parity in our schools. Girls have higher retention and pass rate in all national transition exams in the tertiary and vocational institutions. Our policy of ensuring that STEM, STEM education for girls from primary through a university has resulted in a record number of girls opting to do STEM disciplines and doing exceptionally well. Our national commitment to achieving SDG 4 to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all is unbending. We remain open to strategic partners, partnerships to meet our obligation to future generations which is not only confined to national development, but also to the inevitable global needs that integrate all pieces for a developed, peaceful, and thriving world. Now I come to governance. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this administration recognizes that our collective efforts will be in vain if we do not tackle headlong, age-long governance issues that have long meditated against Syrians' journey to global reckoning. Upon my assumption of political office in 2018, my government developed a comprehensive framework to reverse Syrians' negative perception. We remain committed to sustaining and developing democratic principles and respect for human rights, the rule of law, and good governance. Without a healthy democracy, we cannot assure our people and partners of a stable country. A part of our commitment to democracy I'm proud to say that we have repealed the criminal libel law that hindered our, our country's press freedom and also abolished the death the penalty. <laughs> our government's concerted efforts to fight corruption and promote transparency have continued to gain global traction. Notably, Zuradio has consistently made upwards progress. Social perception index, the CPI. In six years, our country moved. 22 places upwards on the CPI rankings from 130 in 2017 to 108 in 2023. 
This is above the sub-Saharan uh, sub -Saharan African average and the highest Syria has ever scored since the CPI ranking began. Our government also reflects the nation's rich diversity, ensuring that all voices are heard and respected. We are committed to increasing the representation of women, youth, and marginalized groups in decision-making processes. In our steadfast commitment to dismantle the barriers to gender inequality, our government signed into law the Gender Equality and Women's Empowerment Act, GIMI, ensuring that women receive equal pay for equal work and amplifying their voices in all societal domains, from workplace to the political arena. A minimum of 30% representation of women is guaranteed by law. Ladies and gentlemen, good governance is not an end in itself, but a means to achieve sustainable social and economic progress. My government has continued to create an environment that fosters economic growth, job creation, and poverty reduction. This includes implementing policies that support entrepreneurship, attract investment and promote sustainable development. My government has undertaken ambitious reforms and calls on our medium-term national development plan 2024-2030 titled a transformative acceleration agenda for food security, human capital development and job creation. These reforms, though ambitious, are necessary for Syrian's sustainable future. Agriculture is our main priority sector for the next four years, with a vision of attaining food security and sovereignty in our nation. Through our Fit Salon program, we aim to ignite job creation, catalyze economic momentum, has seen significantly diminish the burden of poverty. In addition, we will continue investing strategically in human capital development, seeking traditional and innovative job creating opportunities for our youth through our youth employment scheme. Our technology and infrastructure program is a forward-looking initiative designed to lay the bedrock for resilient and sustainable avenues of economic progress. Reforming our public service architecture, we ensure a service delivery mechanism befitting of our people's aspirations. I therefore invite Yonsei University and all credible stakeholders to join us in building a nation that is just, prosperous, and inclusive. A nation where every citizen has the opportunity to thrive and where our government continues to reflect the wishes of the people, by the people, and for the people. In closing, distinguished students of this great university, the future leaders of our society in an increasingly globalized world, I say to you, hold fast to the spirit and philosophy of Yonsei University, the principles of truth, and freedom.
Stay true to your convictions and passions. Serve humanity with an open heart. Unleash your potential. Let your light shine and contribute to humanity's prosperity. The world awaits your contribution and greatness. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the excellent delivery of encouraging message to the Yansi people and Sierra people. We really appreciate it. Now, uh, flowers will be presented to His Excellency and Her Excellency by the President of the Union. Please come forward to the podium and then flowers will be presented by His Excellency and Her Excellency.